Hey guys, Private Jack here, and in this video we're going to discuss decompiling valve models using Crowbar. First thing we're going to do is we're going to go and grab a copy of Crowbar. And to do that, I'm going to use one of the links that I've already put in the guide. And go to the uh, Crowbar group and grab uh, a download link and go and get Crowbar. So to get to groups, we have to go in through our profile. Groups, I'm already a member. No, I'm not. I've killed my membership to the Crowbar group. I'm going to click on finding a group. Type in here Crowbar. Wait for it to pop up. This is the one that we want right here. Crowbar Source Engine Modding Tool. We'll go to that group. I suggest that you join the group because Zek Macaw is always updating this tool. The current version right now is 0 0.68. So I'm going to join the group. I'm going to click on this link right here. Go to his GitHub. That will open up in a browser. And right here, it takes us right to the releases page, and the most recent release is the one that we want. In this case, it's 0 0.68. If I scroll down the page, I'll find a download link. This file downloads in a 7-zip format, and as you saw back on his website, or on his group page, he gives you an actual link to go and get 7-zip, which is a decompressor for 7-zip archives, or you can use WinRAR, which is the decompressor that I use. Okay, so let's get back to the site and download Crowbar. My downloads go to my desktop, and with anything I download from the web, I right-click on it, and I run it through a virus scan. There it goes through the virus scan, comes back, reports safe, no threats. I'm going to minimize these things now, and all I'm going to do is right click on that zip file, or on that 7-zip file, drag it to my desktop, and I'm going to extract the files into a folder right here on my desktop. And I'm going to call it Crowbar 0.68. Crowbar will run from anywhere on your computer. This folder can be in any anywhere on your computer. All you have to do is link into it. I open up the uh, folder and I want to run this Crowbar EXE. So I could actually drag, create a shortcut on my desktop, send it down here onto my um, taskbar, which you can see I already have a version of this on my taskbar and to run it all I, you do is double click on the exe file in this video we're just going to discuss decompiling we don't have to do any type of setup or anything else like that to decompile all we have to do is click on the decompile button click here on the browse and go find the file the MDL file that you want to decompile and the one that I'm going to decompile is a fem scout and I gotta find my uh, no wrong one where are we there we are click on the browse button source filmmaker game I'm going to come down here to the workshop models and it doesn't matter what type of MDL file it is it can be a prop it can be a character it can be a MDL that contains animation and where the devil is that I want that specific model this one Get back here. Where are you? Program Steam Apps Source Filmmaker Game Workshop Models FM. 
right there and that model right there. Now I can put this uh, into the sub uh, folder of where the model actually exists now or into a work folder and I want this to go to a work folder here on my desktop so I'm going to use the browse button and just point to my desktop. I'm going to create a folder here and I'm going to call this FemScout. And it looks like I've already got one there called FemScout, so I'm going to call it something else. Rename FemScout 2. Okay, I'm going to select FemScout 2 and click Open. I will put that there. Now here in the recreate files, this section here are the files that you want to create. Okay, I want to create a QC file because basically if I'm just doing a quick change or adding a texture group, I want to have the original QC that the model was built with. I don't need QCI files. What a QCI is is a QC instruction where we can link off we can link the main QC off into different sections of a QC like we can put all the texture stuff in a QCI. We can put all the 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 jiggle bones and whatnot else in another QCI and it basically just call them through the QC. I'm not going to do that. Each texture group skin family on a single line. Yes, I want that. Uh, I only want changed materials in that texture group line. Uh, that way I'm not looking at a bunch of textures that aren't changing. Uh, include defined bones. This is uh, very good if your model actually includes bones that are not connected to mesh. So basically... Um, things like weapon bones, hat bones, that kind of thing that uh, the model has. So I'm going to include that. Um, use mixed case for keywords. I'm not really worried about that. Reference uh, mesh SMD. Yes, I want the reference mesh SMD. And I want to remove the material, uh, the paths from the material file names. I just want the individual file name in the materials when it actually builds the materials in Blender. Texture BMP files, this is for Gold Source type models. The texturing in Gold Source was they actually pinned a BMP onto the actual model. We don't need that in this case. LOD mesh, uh, this is the mesh that if a model is close up to you, you get more and more detail. Uh, if it's farther away, the model breaks down, the polys start to drop, and it becomes less detailed. Uh, I don't need these in Source Filmmaker, so I turn that off. Physics Mesh, uh, this is the collision model, and we don't have physics in Source Filmmaker, so I don't need physics models. Vertex animation, these are the facial flexes, and yes, I want the facial flexes. I also want procedural bones if there are any, and if there are any bone animations already pinned to the actual model, like the ref pose, that kind of thing, I want those as well. And I'm going to place them in a separate folder called anims in this particular folder. Folder for each model. This is if I'm actually decompiling like multiple models. I can decompile a whole, uh, like if I wanted to decompile the models folder with 150 models in it, I could do that. And clicking this will create a folder for each model. Uh, prefix mesh name uh, with the model name, I don't want to do that. And format for strict importers. I asked SEC what that was and basically some of the uh, import tools have some sort of strict requirements for how they actually bring things in. I actually, I never use it. Don't need to write a log file. All my log will be down here in this block. 
Um, decompile info, comments, files, don't need that. And decla uh, declare uh, QCIs. If I have this box checked on, I want to check that box on too. <clears throat> if I know uh, what model version this particular model is and I want to overwrite that model to something else, I can do it here. This is really advanced stuff and I don't want to go here. So once I have this set up, all I have to do is click decompile. And if I go into this folder now, I'm going to find all my SMDs, my VTAs that make up the model. Here in the Atoms folder, I'm going to find my ragdoll and my ref uh, SMD animation files. So that's basically all there is to it. Now, I said you can do actual animation files. Uh, so let's go and find an actual animation type model. This is the models that are actually holding all the different sequences for different things. And the best place to go for that is right into the TF folder. Go to Models, uh, Player, and here you see them, like this one here, the demo animations. These are all the sequences that that model actually has. I'm going to decompile the Sniper one. Click there. I'm going to change this, and I can change it just by typing. And once I'm finished that, I come down here. I don't have to change anything here. Decompile. And here it is. These are all those animation files. And there are something like 1,208, 1,206 animation files. <coughs> Excuse me. And they are all SMDs ready for import into Blender. So that's basically all there is to it. And how you decompile Valve models for use in Blender. We'll get into actually importing them in a few minutes uh, in another video. So with that, I'm going to say Private Jack out.